This week on CD-ROM, we're playing another game where you get to kill rats of all kinds. <laughs> no, you have to. But you have to kill rats. <laughs> this time you actually have to. Yeah, it's Fallout. It's Fallout. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll say that after. No, no, okay, no, edit Bob, edit that out. We're gonna... Welcome to CD-ROM, a brotherly stroll of the PC games of the 90s and early 2000s. My name is Bob, and join hey, me. Hey, I'm Jim. With me. Why do you Why do you keep trying to say we, my what name? What we need to do is think about, I've been actually thinking about this for a while, about how I want to introduce you. I'd like to introduce you, and here, and I'll say something about you being my brother, so that I don't have to do same parents. No, you don't, you don't have to, because you no. already implied that we were brothers. No, we've gone over stroll. this. The brotherly stroll could mean so many things. No, it literally doesn't mean many things. It could things. mean a lot of things. But yes, <laughs> this is my bro there of three years difference. Three and and we're here to talk about another game. Yeah, indeed. Jim, Fallout. Yes, the game is Fallout. Circa 1997. Yeah. Correct. Yes. And we've actually, for those of you who've been uh, listening in real time, we had a little bit of a, a break, holiday break. No, they don't know that. You don't know that. Okay, well, you don't, don't know that, but we did. There was a bit that. of a holiday break. No, as you I can see, I moved. edit out the Christmas tree. Yes. <laughs> you cannot tell what <laughs> time. Your episodes are evergreen. And Fix as you can post. see, I have a new shitty background, which will yeah. eventually look decent. That's the plan, to turn this into actually, like an office Actually, we cannot studio. promise that. Yeah, we can't promise that, but it, it will be look different. It will be look different. Right now, it's actually uh, not yeah, even. Yeah, it will be look different. And yeah. Right now, it's not even as shitty looking as it normally is. And I moved the dog crates to the side rather than behind me. So it doesn't have mm. usually like Yeah, but a, now you're not in like the dog pound. I know. But it is. The smell, believe me, is there. <laughs> it's actually more of a stench the st than a smell. <laughs> the thick dog ambiance is still very much here. Believe me yeah, on that one. That's good. I'm, gonna, I'm glad. I'm going to full screen. Okay. So let's talk about this game, Jim. This is one that you had picked. Uh, yeah, it's it's like a Salita pretty popular Stown. like series. Mm -hmm. um, and I had never played any of the games before. I don't think you had either. Correct? No, I had not. Somehow I had, I had not. Yeah, I think they were just kind of popular. I don't know. I, it's just like after it, it, I think they were popular, like after I was like really like playing actively newer systems. Well, you mean like, so like the Fallout newer 3, ones you're saying? So like it, it came Fallout came in 97. Yeah. And then Fallout 2 was in 98. Okay, really? Okay. And okay. Fallout well, 3, which I think was the one that was like really, really popular. I mean, I don't know. Fucking yeah. Who knows, right? Well, you mean you're I, the one that did the research. And even though. I don't know. Yeah, you're the, okay. Just making sure right? that you're and the one that, that did the was, research. That one was in 2008. So oh, at that wow. point, That's a big jump. That's 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't even know. Quick math. Well, I do kind of know the story, but. But yeah, so it's a big jump. Wait, hold on, Jim. I forgot. We're getting, see, we're out, we're out of practice. We have to start out by explaining how the podcast works. Bob, no, but it, you can't do that every you time. You have to do it every time because it could be the Lito. first time. All right, so do it now. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just do it now, Bob, it and then now. cut it in before. I'll do it. Yeah. No, I'll do it after the fact. Do you just like so those effects know. where it's like waves just, so just, they know it's a flashback? This is how you guys yeah, can yeah. tell that we don't edit these. So the way this podcast <laughs> works is every week, my brother and I will play a certain throwback game from the 90s and early 2000s, a PC throwback. So I'm going to call it retro. We'll play for at least three hours or unless you beat the game or, you know, I got it. If you feel that you got nothing else to really gain, you can go ahead and crap out at that point. We take notes and then uh, we meet up to talk about our experiences. Yeah. And this is what's happening right now. So every week we switch off on who picks. The person that picks does the research and tells us about the history of the game and such. And then the person who didn't will go more into their kind of experience playing the game. And we're here right, to talk right, about right. Fallout today, which is a game that James picked. So a part, also a part of the rules is that I need to say that I keep forgetting to record any of my gameplay so we can include that. Okay, that's also important. That is and part of the rules that I need to say that. Normally, and we have kind of a dynamic going where I'm the guy that reads the manual and Jim's the guy that doesn't. And then we kind of compare our experiences. But spoiler, I never got around to reading this manual, which is actually a really cool looking manual. Well, Bob, don't worry, because I also didn't read the manual. Okay, good. So you don't, can, you don't can count on me for that. <laughs> so, don't, so don't worry. I will add, yeah. before you get into the history, which I actually really want to know, I had to stop myself from looking it up. Oh, great. Because I know game. so much, oh, Bob. I did son so of a much bitch. research. You're the research guy. <laughs> Bob, I'm t <laughs> don't worry. Lure Talk about how much you want to hear while I look uh, like unrelatedly at this other screen. <laughs> I have to check my Instacart <laughs> groceries. Yeah, so you unrelatedly look at that while I talk about it. So the manual that was really cool, it was like in character. I only like quickly scrolled through it, but it's like um, in, I'm not in character, in the world. It doesn't seem like a normal manual. It has like a ton of backstory and graphics and it's kind of like introducing you to the game as if you're actually there, which is always cool, I think, in a manual. We've seen kind of games go back and forth. 
Um, and this one's very much in character. And I really am kicking myself because it Steam made it very easily. You could just click view the manual. I opened it up and I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to set aside some time. I've been sick. So my attention span is lower than normal. And I kept like opening and like, mm, I gotta read this bad boy. It's a pretty, look, looks like a real thicko. So I'm gonna have to set aside some time to read it. And that was gonna be today before this, but then, you know, computers are as computers do. But luckily, uh, we're here. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, I uh, it didn't want to pick up my webcam. There was a whole thing. Anyway, uh, we, won't, we won't talk about that. should get better gear. No, 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 Jim, tell us about the history of this game, which you definitely yeah, didn't so just look up. it came out in 1997, I can tell you that. Okay, right? we got, I actually um, also have that. I wrote that down. All right, right, yeah. No. So I believe it's called, uh, the creator was Interplay Software. Interplay... Interplay. Yeah. Interplay something. By gamers for gamers. Interplay Productions. Okay. That's what it is. Um, and so they they made uh, Fallout 1 and 2, and then eventually they got either bought out or Bethesda bought the rights to the Fallout series. Interesting, yeah. And then Fallout yeah. 3 and Fallout 4. Is there's a 4? Yeah, and there's more after that. Or, so you don't even like know. Fallout 76, Fallout, some, there's another one. Yeah, New Vegas. Well, here's something I want to add in, related. Sorry, because yeah. I know this is this is your part. Because when you start the game, it says interplay by gamers for yeah. gamers, and then it says Brian Fargo presents. Correct. He's the he's the the like the owner or head. Brian okay. Fargo. Did he go on to work at Bethesda, maybe or something? Mm, I don't. We should I, really, I really know didn't, this. I could tell you that really quickly because his name is clickable. <laughs> um, this is no, a real, it doesn't look. He like seems that. like a Ron Gilbert type. No, nah, he says after leaving Interplay, Fargo looked to find outlets, yada, yada, founded in exile entertainment in 2002. OK, so it wasn't like he didn't go on to found Bethesda or something like that. No, nah, no. Nah, OK, nah. so they just picked up the IP. And yeah, I apologize correct. if yeah. any of this is wrong. It's. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is certainly I don't know. I could be just <laughs> reading the wrong sentence. This is like the next sentence in level. Wikipedia. You could be like that. That previous sentence is completely incorrect. This is just a trick. This is a trick sentence, which Wikipedia <laughs> does of course a lot, of course. Yeah. I, I, I mean, we really are. This, it's not within the scope of this podcast to be peer reviewing the quotes from in Wikipedia. Or right? peen like, reviewing. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, I do a lot of peen reviews. Okay. We will review a few peens if we have the time. Yeah. If you mail in, if you email us at theboys at cdrock.com. Yes. Yeah. If you send in peens, we'll review them. Okay. <laughs> in fact, please don't do that. But we will if you send it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so <laughs> back to Brian so the Fargo's game, peen. Right. So the game um, is like a role playing game. It's kind of like open world, it has like turn based combat. So it was yeah. considered like a spiritual successor to the game that they had made before called uh, Wasteland. Interesting. Which is like okay. kind of like like a, a more like medieval kind of like fantasy sci-fi game with like trolls and goblins and, and things like that. But they wanted to do more like post-apocalyptic stuff or something like that. But apparently they were having trouble like adapting the IP and like getting full rights to be able to do like a sequel or something like that, I think with Electronic Arts. Hmm. And so they decided to make like a new game. And so like the game... Fallout, like as the name implies, whether you realize it or not, is about like a world with atomic fallout. It's like a post-apocalyptic nuclear. Game. Correct. It, it, the, I, Wikipedia calls it uh, atom punk. Interesting. You know, like steampunk. Yeah. But it's like atom punk, which is like things that are like based off of like like a McCarthyism, Cold War, fear of nuclear. Okay. This sort Maca of thing. McCarthy was afraid of communism, not nuclearism. No, I know, but it's like that era. Yeah, isn't it? I of, mean, like, the it, Cold War. Yeah, it's around the same time. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Well, I just don't want to um, think this is a game about communism. All right, this isn't Mother Russia bleeds. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll get there. But you day. should go play that game. When we cool. run out of games that were produced, when in we've that finished era every game that we're ever played, then we'll move uh, on to new ones. Yes. Yeah. So the game. Um, I, I, I'm not going to talk too much about the actual experience of the game. You can talk about that's kind of your role as sure. a person who didn't look at any of the game, how how it kind of plays out. Yeah, you're the history man. Fill in the gaps. Uh, but I mean, that's that's pretty much all I really looked into is like the creation. And, and, and it was like it was a popular game, I think, when it came out. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's not a lot of like. <laughs> Jim, you're not really wowing me right now with this. No, history well, there, there wasn't a lot of like fanfare when it came out. They weren't okay. like a super popular studio to where there's like insights into the production or anything. So like it that. like very much built into this beast now. And these yeah, were its yeah. these were its humble beginnings. You're saying? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Okay, all right, that's good to know. Um, that's your history, and we'll get into gameplay then. Yeah, I mean, the history is like to me, it's. Unless there's something interesting, it's like not that interesting. Well, you know I didn't I mean? do like, any of the research, so I can't say. No, Maybe I know, that's but you know what I mean. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. All right, we'll get into like, gameplay then. So this is, as Jim mentioned, which is actually one part I didn't know about the game. 
um, and maybe it's changed. It's an RPG. And it actually confused me because it kind of switches out. Well, no, I guess it's classic RPG game style. When you're not in a, in a combat mode, you can move around however you want. But when yeah. you're in a combat mode, you can't move as much as you want. So I guess we'll talk about the kind of the biggest game mechanic, which is the action points. Yeah. Okay. It's, a, it's an interesting mechanic. Yeah. yeah. So the way it works is if you're in some kind of combat zone, whether you want to be or not, you're limited by your action points, which it starts you off with, let's just say eight. I can't remember what it was. And uh, then, yeah, I believe I got eight. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Eight. And then from there, everything you do, like literally everything, even opening up inventory and shit like that. Although I don't think opening up preferences does. No. It, but opening up inventory. No, when I opened does. up my inventory, I don't think it burned an it actual does. point. Did yeah, it? for sure. Because okay, I, I, I wasn't counting. Yeah, because yeah, so. I remember a number of times it's, I went to open my inventory and it's like, you don't have enough action points. I was like, fuck. Wow. So even opening your inventory doesn't even let you do that, which I kind of like that because, you know, it does take action to open up a bag or whatever the fuck. But you have a certain amount of action points and then you use them for both movement and attacking and inventory and items and anything you want to do. And that's the main you know way that you'll interact um, with the world in combat. And there's a good amount of it. Um, I didn't find yeah. the combat particularly interesting and also i'll bring up probably one of my biggest beefs with like the beginning of the game and it got a little better as it went on man i was missing so often and normally when you play an rpg you miss like is infrequent i found you start out missing like one out of ten times you'll have a miss most of the time you expect to hit and get like a small mm -hmm. amount of damage not to miss most of the time Especially when I'm fucking standing right next to a rat and I go to kick it and it's like, miss, like, give me a fucking break. Or I'm holding a gun and I'm pointing it right at the goddamn rat's head and it's like, miss. Yeah. And I'm like, you got to be shitting me. I mean, mine didn't even say miss. I had to, like, interpret, like, the, the death throes of the rat to <laughs> Wait, see hold on a sec. Okay, hold on yeah, a sec. Yeah, yeah, let, let me, let me let you finish let me take a, no, no, Let me take yeah. a step back. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have to take an even further step back now because you've already blown my mind as to what the hell you were doing over there. So when you start the game, you're looking at your screen. Let's just say two thirds of the screen is the world. And then you have one third that goes across the bottom of your HUD. Thing is going on. Now, a big piece of that is your inventory um, and all the different options. But then all, also, all the way to the left is a little bit of like a console like text output happens as you interact with the world around you. A lot of this stuff doesn't come up on the main screen, you have to be reading the little texty box at the bottom. Oh, so, so I did okay. notice that. So it's very like, um, now it, because it, that's where it would tell you that you missed. Well, yeah. Okay. I didn't know that, but I could see that I missed cause I <laughs> could see that I didn't like, yeah, you know, I didn't like hit them, Arr! but I, I, I did kind of enjoy that. Like it told you all the things it said, like you see a wall, yeah. you see this thing. It was very old school. Nothing seems off about it or something. It was very, yeah. Very like classic point and click adventure game. It was almost like a text-based adventure in that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Sorry. Yeah. It, it was, it was kind of odd because oh, it like, was like you. It was like you type in turn left, and it says you see a corridor. Exactly. Yeah. Kind know? of like reading Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. 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 That was kind of odd, especially because there is you can see it already, and like you see a sad looking dog. But I'm I like think, I'm already looking at. Him. I think for the time that was like people were used to seeing that. You know, I think mm. looking back on it, it seems weird because we have the information visually, but I think people were like used to reading that information like a text and maybe being able to glean some sort of information that they wouldn't be able to normally see. Yeah, I could see that. And it's also a, a way to add more detail without having to add more detailed graphics. Like you don't yeah, have to zoom yeah. in onto the guy's face to see he's sad. It just says like, are you seeing old sad man? Yeah. yeah. Now on top of that, there's also- Wait, you can zoom? No, that's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah. So on top of that, <laughs> Sometimes when you go to uh, interact with things, it will show up on screen. Um, so people will say things. Someone come up, up over their head or like if you're interacting with an NPC, um, uh, just as a spoiler, I got to work with an NPC as a teammate and he used to say things. They're called taunts. Apparently the enemies have them too. And it was one of the options that you could turn on and off if you want to see their taunts. Um, seeing as we do this in rant format, I'll do a quick side rant into the options menu for which there are many options. Um, one of the most important ones, which if you didn't find out very quickly would have drove you insane as it drove me insane, is running normal versus always option. 
Did you find oh, no, that? I didn't do when? that. I was doing a lot of double clicking. <laughs> oh, I didn't even know you could do that to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seemed to, before I found that option, he seemed to decide when he thought it was appropriate to run or not on his own based on how yeah, far away I, I, I was telling know. him to go. And it's, it, it was also really ambiguous, like how far away I was able to click or like around what corners. Yeah, I found that annoying. So too. like the map is kind of broken up into like hexagons. So, so it's it's a big like like map like you were playing like Dungeons and Dragons on like a map. Yeah, and so it's all broken up into like hexagons, and you can click where you want, and it highlights it. But sometimes if you click like around the corner of a building, or it seemed like just too far away from where he is, it would give you an X. Yeah. Or if you tried to click to get him to go into a building where a door was closed. Spoiler alert! It took me a long time to figure out you have you are able to open doors. Yeah, that that mechanic was a little clunky. I found. Yeah, I didn't realize that like you had to go up to the door, be like a certain number of spaces away, and then hold. You have to click in and hold it, and then it brings up a drop down of the actions you're able to do. You don't that actually. Also, took me a while to figure out. Do you have to be? I'm trying to think of how far away. Sometimes if I told him, he'd go over and do it. I, but I guess oh, other no. times he'd say, "You're too far away to do that." Fair enough. No, I never got him to be able to automatically do it. Sometimes, yeah. like if you click it and it's like a thing that only has one reasonable option, you could click it once and he'll like open it. But sometimes you have to like click and hold and wait for the drop down and then select what you want to do. It's, okay. I think what yeah. we I think what we need to do here, because I did a very shitty job of leading us, is go all the way all the way back in the way that we normally do and say, okay, the game has started. Let's go there. Okay, okay. okay. So the game is No, I'm doing like a, it. <laughs> oh, okay. Fine. I'm the gameplay guy. You're the well, history you guy. We, yeah, we well, had well, your chance of yeah, gameplay. Well, okay. Guy. All right. You know what? I would like you to do it now because you seem okay, excited. Yeah. To so do the it. game, you start out. And as we mentioned, it's like a post-apocalyptic game. Yeah. Apocalyptic. Yeah. A lot of And you start out in like your shelter and there's like an old guy and he's like, hey, little boy, you have to shave <laughs> you us. Have to kiss me. Yeah. Again. That <laughs> <laughs> um, sounded very Master Roshi, but please continue. Sorry. Yeah. When I was talking to dad earlier, he did an old man impression. It was he really did good. an old man impression. So just yeah, I was like, normally. Oh, so we're doing this on the first of the year. Spoilers. Yeah. You can edit that out if you want. And Beep. I was like, oh, we're did doing you make this it on past midnight? And he year. was like, no, I'm too old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He called me like 1130. He said he was already in bed. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So the um, the you talk to like the older man. I don't know if he's like the chieftain or the alderman or whatever of this. Yeah, like vault. They call it like vault thirteen or something. That's where they right. had hid out when the world exploded. Yeah, and so it's basically if you've ever seen like doomsday preppers or something like that, it's like a whole community living in this underground bunker or whatever. Mole people and they became. The, the the main starting plot driver is that their water filtration like computer chip or something like that has yeah. malfunctioned. And they'll only have enough water for three months or something like that. Something. I don't remember the exact oh, yeah. time. I agree. I agree that I also don't remember, but it was a decent chunk yeah, of time. Yeah. But it, it, there is like a running clock in the game. Right. And so I think there eventually will come to be some decision making processes that you have to do to like save time to make sure you get the shit done within time. But I mean, for the purposes of us, like I didn't give a fuck. I was like, all right, rest until. Well, that's also a mechanic. Of the yeah. Game, well, we, I mean, we can kind of comment on that because then you start out. Do you start out? Uh, yeah, you start out on a map screen. And oh, um, this is what you were saying, an overview map screen. No, no, you don't start on the map screen. You start out Just in the standing bunker, in front of the bunker in the vault and you have to leave the vault. But it's okay. not super clear how to leave the vault. So I was just clicking around until I was like, let me click the edge of the screen. Yeah. And then you ran to the edge of the screen and you go to a map. Well, that's actually good because you like that kind of thing, like put you in a situation where you have to find out how the mechanic works. But it's yeah, not too yeah, hard. Yeah. That you I, don't, don't I, figure I, it I out. didn't mind that. at yeah. all. Yeah, that's I think that's good um, teaching there. And then he tells you where he thinks the other water chip is going to be. But you don't know where that is. I think he says it's it's like due east or something like that. Yeah, I think he I think it comes up. So once, like you said, Jim, you enter that world that you were in, you come back out and then you realize like, OK, it's like a board of tiles and each tile represents an area that you can explore. Mm. And you're at this vault here and then pretty far due east. You can you can already see on the map um, where the next place is that you need to go. If you scroll right. over there, it, it'll show I think you once it, it you becomes can click like on it. privy to you. Yeah, yeah. like you can. I think if they tell you where it is, like yeah. when I got to another thing, they told me like the 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 trade station or something is like due south. Yeah, and then it it popped up on my on my global map or whatever they call it, Globo Gym. Yes, yeah. So that's the way that you navigate the world of Fallout. It's kind of like a zoomed out map view, and then you move from area to area. And like Jim was saying, it takes time to move around that overview map. 
Now you'll just click somewhere and it'll go automatically. And one kind of the mechanics that I, I thought was cool. So you'll see terrain on this map. And if you go over mountainous terrain, he, it takes them longer to get through. We also kind of skipped it. You get to choose a character or create your own. Yeah. I mean, that's classic RPG shit. Yeah. Like, I picked a guy. Um, I think his name was like Max Steele. Yeah, that sounds like a... He was a big, big, burly, hefty boy. Uh, Actually, he I wasn't burly, the burly he was guy I was going to. What'd you pick? And then I was Sneaky like, you man? know what? No, I, it was like a normal guy. <laughs> like whatever. It, John Norman. Like, John J. Norman. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and I was like, ah, you know what? And then I actually fucked around with the specs a little bit because it gave you... You could, yeah, so like tinker. They, I think they give you maybe four or five people to choose from and they have like loaded specs. There was already. a Create Custom as well. Create Custom I person. I didn't want to do that. Nah, much. I was like, let yeah. me just play yeah. the game. Right. I was like, I get the idea. Yeah. I get it. I can <laughs> make a purse. I've made John yeah, Bachelor. Yeah. But, but right. I did. I like... um. <laughs> I think I like lowered charisma or some shit. Uh, just like, don't oh. want him too charismatic. You know, why don't no, you no, calm no, no, down no. I there, don't wanna, sir? I don't want to have to sit through him talking to people. Yeah. Or... Hey, what's going on? <laughs> no, we want to beat yeah. the game. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> that, that, was, that was interesting that you got to mess around with that, but it was a little, yeah. it was like a lot. But well, I guess people it, like that in um, RPGs, right? Yeah. If you're inclined to read the manual and know what each thing does and stuff. Yeah. But there was a lot of stuff to like like shift around there's a lot of different points like you get deep points if you want skill to. points yeah oh one one uh thing that i wanted to mention for that one when you're looking at your skill point screen there's an option to print to file or print you could print it out that's pretty cool yeah i didn't try doing it because i don't have a printer hooked up i probably should have and just probably created as a pdf but i thought it was pretty cool it shows you like the times i'm like oh i kind of want to have this on my desk so i could just look at it rather than have to keep opening this menu it's yeah that makes smart, sense you know? So you're on the overview world, right? And it shows you that you have to go to this place to get this water chip and you have a certain amount of time to do it. And as you move across the map, time goes. And as Jim kind of yeah. touched on briefly before, um, if you're hurt, you can heal by resting and resting uses up time. That's a, a dynamic yeah. in a lot of different RPGs. You could just like sleep and then it heals you. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's better than like having to keep track. I don't know about better. It's just different than having to keep track of like food. You could still and, like, do, do that. I, I haven't there found is, any There food, was food, yeah. Spo spoiler, I didn't find any food, but... <laughs> you know, you're probably not going to play after this, so we can spoil all we want now. Oh, yeah, I'm... All right, well, hold on. Let me spoil okay. this. I'm definitely not playing this game. Ever really? Again. Okay, so yeah. hold, hold your horses now. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting to the meat and taters. Uh, yeah, to let what let is some taters? Meat. Let me get that, that sweet, let sweet Let me get meat. the sweet iguana meat. Yes, we'll get there. Um, but yeah, there is food. There's also stim packs, like health packs that you could use instantly. Yeah, so eventually... Okay, so... <laughs> there, eventually, I figured out that I had like an inventory, right? And <laughs> good, so... Good, good. Even I, though it like, says oh, I, I, INV button on the screen. It could have been like invitation or something. Uh, you never know. <laughs> yeah, sure. No, I found it first because I went through my 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 new strategy of pressing every button on the keyboard and see what it does. Okay, that's a very annoying strategy, but I guess it makes sense. Not really. When you don't, when you refuse to read the instructions and you don't know what's happening, is a pretty good strategy. I mean, it could be good and annoying at the same time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 just like it's our like friendship. Finding it's not annoying for me. <laughs> I like, don't oh, like the idea that like, this one. You press like R, and then like the the game minimizes or like fucking nah, something, nah, that or something's changed that's so subtle that you don't know you've changed it. Yeah, no, I'm sure that did happen. That yes. is the yeah, possibility for a lot of annoyance. But yes. Well, R like in Diablo should have been run walk. Oh, uh, that's a nice little option. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It was R. As I didn't read the manual, I don't know if there's one for this game. I really let myself down not reading that manual because it looked good. As far as manuals I mean, go, it looked, it looked juicy. Well, I can't I can read it, but I can't talk about it. So that's the whole point. And I can't use anything that I learned, so that's no, you can about use it. it in real life. Yeah, scenario. I can use it in real life scenario, or I can bring it up in like a pub scenario. Someone's yeah. like, "Did you ever read the Fallout manual?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, she <laughs> name's Geed, and guess what I did." Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> map. Uh, OK. When you're moving yeah, on the big map, you click into certain areas when you get there and it brings you into a, like a normal, you know, you explore that area. You can pick up from there, Jim, please, if you will. Yeah. So it does. I don't know if you experienced this, but it does have the Pokemon mechanic encounters to where you can have random encounters yeah. along the way. The music is not as good in the animation. It doesn't, no, it doesn't no. go like I found there to be almost no music in this game. I agree. Well, yeah, then why don't we just dig a quick let's make a sure, quick side talk about move that. into sound. I had to put on my own music to like tolerate playing this game. Yeah, not a lot of music at all. A lot of yeah. ambient sounds, but, but not like, a lot of even music. That, there wasn't like even there wasn't like ambient music at all. It was just like ambient sounds. Sometimes it was dead silent. Unless we, yeah, unless we had something like not turned on correctly. No, it I was mean. definitely on. It just, and I looked, checked all the sound settings. It just doesn't have music really. 
Which, hmm. as we've heard from other developers, although they most of the time ended up putting some in. I can understand why you'd think to do that. You're trying to set a vibe. You know, you want it to be yeah. eerie. There's no music in real life. But, but sometimes you, music can make it even eerier. Like that's eerier. true. Eerier. Like if you think about Sanitarium, that <clears throat> had some like spooky <clears throat> music. <clears throat> you know, and a lot of spooky sounds and stuff. They it, they were really good at setting the vibe. Yeah. Tina actually called one of our dogs Stumpy the other day. And she has not listened to the podcast. So I thought that oh. was funny because that's one of the kids. Isn't that like a about Elm Street? It? Uh, what's that movie with the puppets in <laughs> the Christmas? Elm Street. <laughs> that's what's it called, you combine two different movies. It's Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> there you and go. And Nightmare yeah, yeah. on Elm Street. Oh, I'm sorry. The Nightmare Before Elm Street. <laughs> that's an amazing mashup. Wow. <laughs> wow. We should. All right. Hold on. We got to steal that IP. Okay. Well, let's, well, that, let's that's make a that new shirt. beer name. Yeah. We got that. Okay. <laughs> That's actually be a great. I'm sorry, I did not try and do that. All right, actually, nobody write this down or listen to it. If you make beer Hold out there, cut this out. Now. Hold on, we gotta go back and cut this. You know what I'm no. So yes, sound. I wrote really good voice acting, probably better than most of the games we played. It seems uh, like they got actors. I I liked the voice acting in Sanitarium. It's not all of it was amazing. Not all some of it. it was, some of it was some good. of it was like actually bad. But the we're also not talking about this game. Okay, okay. We're, talking about, we're not talking about this game, fair. but I just want to bring it. The main character was really bad because he sounded like he wanted to be an action hero, but everyone else I thought was good. And some of the kids were pretty bad. Some of the Their crazy people were pretty bad. Again, nah. go to <laughs> cdromp.com. You can listen to one of our previous episodes on Sanitarium. Very cool. Maybe game. I'm just edit- editorial all the I think that I you're, you're, I think you're putting Jesus a spin Christ. on it. I think that yeah. you liked it so much that you think it's better than it is, which I respect. It was so fucking frustrating, though. Again, we're not talking about this game right now, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk. Let's talk about Fallout 1997. Yeah, yeah. let's you know, uh, so, let's take so, it back to 1997. So, Sound we're talking about. We did a sidebar. It's yeah, sound, yeah, yeah. Um, no music. I thought the good actual voice like sounds of things happening. So besides music, uh, music aside, the sounds there is none. of the game I thought were pretty good. I agree. Yeah, like I this, think the soundscape yeah, yeah. and sounds and the way you interacted with the world, I thought everything was pretty good. Um, um, I thought it was strange that sometimes when you talk to people, they'd have animated faces with voiceover and sometimes they didn't. And I guess that's how you're supposed to determine how important a person is that you're yeah, talking to. I think it's, yeah, I think it's twofold, right? Jim, so why don't you talk about also, sorry to interrupt you. Once you finish that thought, why don't you talk about the way you talk to people and the mechanics there? Yeah. So I think it's two things, right? To help you know who you who's important to talk to. Yeah. And them just saving memory. The limitations. Saving, yeah. Like, yeah, it's limitations on like shit they need to do. Like why have be able to interact with all these people and just like space. Yeah. You know? Um, but yeah, so you can go and talk to people. Again, you have to like click on them sometimes it'll let you talk to them right away sometimes you have to click and hold and a little face will appear it's like a very overly complicated mechanic yeah but i i think they do that to limit the number of buttons you're responsible for hitting just like let me so they make the button each button have a few roles but like let me just click it with one of my buttons i have right click and left click i'm using left click most of the time let me just click on them and then like in world of warcraft give me options of what i can do with them Talk, right, right, trade. Be like trade. Like if something. I want to trade, I, I get takes, wow it takes a while. Like you have to open. Ten years. We're talking about Fallout still. I am at least. So <laughs> <laughs> you're about to go down memory lane there. I had to keep pushing it for Fallout. So like in this game, Fallout 1997, Brian Fargo, Peen. Um, yeah. Not peen. calling him a pain. Talking about his pain, which we haven't no, seen. Yeah, his record. pain. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Uh, you'd bring up. The menu, it would like whole, a load a whole new HUD. Then you have to like click on barter. Then it brings up a whole nother screen. Then you have to do a bartering thing, which is kind of cool because you can kind of negotiate instead of just straight buying things. Then they have to accept. Then you go back to the talk screen. Then you go your way out. You can't just click trade begin, which I would have liked, or click shop right. begin. That would have been much so easier. So I, I pulled off, I think, two successful barters. I did a, a number of them, yeah. Um, yeah. You can't just I buy was never things. able to, to get people to take my stuff for anything less than the exact amount it was said it was worth. Um, Maybe because I decreased my charisma or something. It, it actually could have been. Yeah, literally. I mean, that make that would make like, sense. Like I was with like, this stuff is worth forty dollars. Will you give me forty two dollars? And they're like, no. So like, uh, I wish you had some more charisma when you said that. And I, and I was 42. like, oh, how about these scorpion tails? <laughs> <laughs> they're like, yeah. But I said charisma, and I'm learning to go away from the the mic. But I'm the tax collector. Oh uh, yeah, that's man. from another game. That's, that's a great sound. That's yeah. a great game, Majesty, the fantasy role playing. Um, Same. Different yeah, episode. Cedarrock.com. 
So I, let's go back to combat because I fucking hated it. <laughs> okay, we're done talking about talking mechanics. Let's talk about yeah. Let's go mechanics. back to combat. Yeah. So like, I didn't realize that I had like a gun for a little while, and then mm. I didn't realize that I used the gun. Eventually, yeah. I realized that like, if you press like the, it was either V, B, or N somewhere on that bottom row. That I actually don't you know. Could, like you could swap out. You could like hot swap the things in your inventory. Like it'll circle through them and then I can get to my gun. Yeah. And then you have to like go into your inventory and like click and drag on ammo and drop it on top of your gun, not in the inventory slot next to your gun. Yeah. You you kind of get used to that mechanic though. And it kind of makes sense after a while. Like, okay, I'm putting bullets into the gun. I guess. You might be but, able to. Well, it's okay. So when he what he's saying here is putting bullets next to it you have two options at least at the beginning you can hold two weapons and when you're in your inventory screen it puts them next to each other but in practice you can only look at one at a time once you're out of the inventory screen so it's like one and two rather than one and right. two so he's saying when i put gun and bullets which is exactly what i did to start with you can only see gun and so you can't use bullet unless you switch you're like what the fuck's yeah going on so here? for a while my gun was empty and i was like why can't i reload it maybe i don't Praise. have the skill yet ah maybe if i had a little more charisma to put those bullets in yeah yeah Tax maybe collector. Um, and then like i was getting <laughs> fucked up by these rats like yeah, in the first rat encounter goddamn rats. like i was down to like one health from these rats can i mention because, something here like, huh your health counter um has i like it Oh, it shows you on screen and it's kind of a dial. So when you get hit, it like it rolls down like literally like, yeah, it's like one of those like mechanical tile clocks. Yeah, really cool. And and you can it, it'll show you if you get extra fucked up, it'll go into negatives. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. Mine went extra negative one time. <laughs> Sorry, Jim. Please continue what you're saying. Rat was fucking. You yeah. Up. Um, got your health. Yeah, the rats row. kind of fucked me up, but I was able to survive the rat encounter. And then like I got a gun. <laughs> the rat encounter. <laughs> yeah. The one, the and then one. I got my gun and then like it was still kind of hard to beat these rats because like they move so far. And it's like you, eventually I figured out I could actually add enough action points to run away from the rats. Yeah. You can have you, you can't just hit run away. Like in Pokemans or some other games, yeah, you have yeah. to literally use your action points to walk as far as you can. Like, let's say six yeah, steps to, at a time. I have to walk eight steps at a time, which and is then annoying. the rats move six steps, and then I move eight steps, then the rats move six steps. So because this is turn-based RPG, I'm sure there was a button to end turn, but because I never look up, I never look up, because I never look up, because I never opened up the manual to learn the button, every time I finished my turn, I had to move my mouse over and hit end turn. Because what? often no. I was left with one action point and so it was waiting for me to do something oh with it. that's what that said he said i just thought turn it said like combat. your turn <laughs> and then i thought it said like their turn no so okay at the far bottom right of your hood on the bottom there was a little square and there was two buttons yeah. that were pretty much were there when you're in combat and it said turn which ends turn and then the one underneath is combat which is end combat so you could, oh. if you accidentally got into combat and for whatever reason it actually let you leave, you could just hit combat and then combat's over. Your action points disappear. Yeah. You can move when around I, when I had leftover points, like when you shoot your gun, it's worth six, but you start with eight. So you always have two left over. Right. So I would just move two extra places. Which is one way you could do. Yeah. And sometimes I did that as well. But now I see that's the stupid way to do it. But here's the thing that annoys me because you don't get to roll over those extra points, which I yeah. would have thought would be a nice little strategy. Okay, I'm not going to move. I'm not going to shoot. And then I'll have the extra ones for the next time. But you don't get that. They yeah. expire each turn. And I'm thinking, like I said, there's probably a button so I can make my turn. Boop. And then end of the turn. And then it starts going. I don't know how I feel about mm. turn-based games. I No, no. I've never been a uh, like a real fan. I mean, I like it. I, I, I don't know. I like it in, in like D&D. And like listening to like people play out adventure games, but I've never really enjoyed it like playing like Quest 64. Mm. Like a turn-based or, RPG, like a classic or like yeah. a number of the Final Fantasy games. Yeah, but I never, I don't think I've ever played a Final Fantasy game. For those of you who've heard all of our that's, episodes, that's, that's probably turn-based as well, right? You'll know that we didn't grow up with the PlayStation, so we didn't yeah. have, uh, we didn't play any of that IP, Final Fantasy or Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. So, but and, and, and we I have were no into, desire to now. You'll also probably know as '90s, 2000s Blizzard fanboys, we preferred action RPGs and played a lot of Diablo True. series. True. Yeah, which I'm sure we'll make our way over to at some point and be able. Yeah, to I play mean, them. those this is kind of going to be like final boss situation. You know what? You know? Okay, we'll talk about that off offline. <laughs> we'll talk about that offline. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Like so table that's, talk. it's turn based. Um, question for you, Jim, and I brought this up earlier, but I forgot to follow through. Is sure. the series always turn based RPG? Like even the newest ones, like Fallout 76, I think is the newest one. Is it still I an RPG? 
Because I kind of thought it was like a 3D. No, um, Fallout like 76 Skyrim. is an online multiplayer game. Uh, Fallout 4. Yeah, but online beep, multiplayer beep, doesn't beep. tell me anything about whether it's turn-based or not. I don't think anyone does online multiplayer turn-based. And now all the comments come in. Actually, <laughs> is EverQuest turn-based or no? I don't know. Is EverQuest still exist or no? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so uh, I thought sorry, it, I'm reading at the moment. Um, so you're doing game research right now. All right, I'll talk about one of the other. No, mechanics no, 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 no. But this is not the game. You're asking that, me about future games. That, okay, true. Okay, so the question, and Jim is definitely not looking this up on the spot. He's looking up: is the the series continued to be? Well, two things. So is Fallout it still three top is down? considered a action role playing game? Okay, so they got rid of the turn based. They're like, guess what? The '90s are over. Nobody wants turn based anymore. We want action, baby. We want to spam baby. whirlwind over and over and over, or frozen yeah. orb, or whatever you want to do. And is it still top down or is it first person? Because I thought it was first person Fallout. Oh, I got to try. He's really, he's really, pictures. guys, he's really working hard here. Oh, oh, I got to Google. Well, I have plenty of uh, notes here I could talk about while you do that. So sure, in yeah. the options, um, there was a ton of it them. It looks first person. Okay. Looks Fallout first. 3. Okay. Is first so person. they changed it to first person. Um, the option screen is very. Interesting. It doesn't look like a normal option screen. It's very like in theme. There's a lot of options, but each one's kind of big. So let's say there's like 12 of them. Um, because it's the, the early 90s, there's like a option for gore. And they actually oh, have. Really? Yeah. So by default, it's turned all the way up, but it's very granular. It's not like a lot, a little. It's like some, a lot, some, a lot, some plus extreme. Hmm. So by default, it's extreme. There's also yeah. a. Uh, profanity filter from the NPCs, mm. funny enough. So sometimes they'll say like, shit, or like, I'm going to kick your ass. And I, by default, the filter's off. So assumedly, if you grew up in a very uh, wholesome house, you could turn that on and he'd be like, poop wagon yeah. or something like that, assumedly. Um, as I mentioned, the run walk thing, that was good. And uh, those are the only interesting options that I wrote down. But I could also talk about... Um, the next thing I have here, which was the video. Video, like, what does it look like? Jim, what graphics would you compare this to? Other games. How does it compare to other games we played as well around the time? Uh, in your opinion. In your very humble I, opinion. Yeah, I don't know what to compare it to with graphics. Hey, did you have something in mind? So, I, I thought it was actually pretty good looking. And I, when you first oh, start okay, the game okay. off Steam, it gives you an option to play Fallout or play Fallout Classic. It says better for older systems, which I assume is less visually impressive and i kept picking that one by the look in your face i'm assuming that you don't even know which one you picked it could it's correct i don't think i got that prompt <laughs> it's good it's good it's possible yeah and so i thought it was pretty good looking i mean some of the um the characters were definitely pre-rendered graphics that were just like put together in that very like choppy right. kind of together um the very first person that you interact in a in a uh, big rendered face has like the sickest unibrow I've seen in a long time. So I appreciated that. Um, and the graphics are kind of like Diablo 2 but better, I'd say. I mean, I thought it was c some of the, for the time, the best graphics for the style that we've seen. I thought everything looked were really bad. good. Yeah, they weren't bad. I think it, it, it I would say Diablo 2 well. is better, but. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'd have to side by side compare, but it was, it was pretty good looking. I had no qualms in the graphics department. Um, no, not really. I mean, I, eh. and he doesn't know it, if he it's tough problems. when you put it up against Diablo two, at least what I have in my head. Yeah. You know, uh, we need, I to feel like there was like more detail in those like caves, you know, and in like the maggot lair and like the, okay, it's a different art tunnel style and things well. like that. Like, and what's, what's the first, uh, the den of evil. Yeah. Like, I feel like there was more detail in that than the scorpion den that I was in, you know? Just so you know, we, uh, listeners, we definitely spend, you know, half the podcast talking about other games. <laughs> <laughs> in case you wanted to listen to Fallout, you're out of luck, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so pretty good in the video department, pretty good in the sound department. I thought the HUD was relatively intuitive, little, little clunkety. A lot easier to use than some of the other games we played because yeah. now we're building up a you good know, I enjoyed vibe that of it the was era. All, I enjoyed that it was like all stylized yes. for that quote unquote Adam Punk. Everything was stylized and that I really yeah. give them a, a big kudos for. Even the manual, yeah, yeah. like I said, was heavily stylized. So they really want you to, they do a lot of effort to make you feel like you're very much there. Yeah. You're living so, in that so, world. Yeah. So so I had some problems with the the combat. Like I, I did get killed at one point. Well, I got killed like a number of times. Transatlantic voyage. <laughs> 
Um, there was trying no to go ocean, from one way, place no. to another, just like the Titanic. Um, <laughs> there was no ocean like, or icebergs, just for people who haven't played the game. Uh, yeah, that's true. It was all sand. It was all sand. It's an ocean of sand. It's really. a, yes, um, correct. But before that, I was like getting so like fucked up by rats, and like <laughs> I was like about to die to like scorpions as well, and like eventually I was able we to find scorpions. like some dude named like Lars or something. I was Ian. able to like maybe. Uh, I was able to get him to like roll with me. Agreed. Yep. And like I jumped him into my gang and then we, you know. That was a we, big game changer because he could really fuck oh, people Oh yeah, for up. sure. Because like he was able to shoot twice. Like for a number, reason. number of times. I think it was like three. Yeah, I don't understand what like how they were like rolling for initiative to decide what, how many times he gets to go and at what turn. He was just much he higher would, like, level. Shoot, then I would go and then he would shoot and then like an enemy would go and then he would shoot. Then I'd go. Then he would shoot again. Then enemy would go. And I'd be like, this is fucking OP. Yeah. He he really was like a turning point in the game of what you're able to do because he was much stronger. He had way more action points, it seemed. Yeah. And you were able to start plowing your way through. But it was an interesting move. You know, like you can't just this is the kind of game that will let you go into areas that maybe you shouldn't be. And if you don't know what you're doing, you'll get fucked up. There's no wall there. Like you could go to right. some random level sense. and there'd be like 15 scorpions about to fuck you to death. Right, right, and yeah. they very much will if you if you don't have your boy with yeah, you. Yeah, they will. <laughs> they will. Oh, so here's another interesting part of the game, and we're not really going through plot too much, which I'm actually happy about. So you can go play the game, but at some no, point, I think we're 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 not in the business of like reviewing the plot. What of games, business are we We're not going to get to the end of most of these games for us to make like well, really insightful comments. I did about the beat plot, Spy Fox. We'll never in dry finish cereal. it. I did beat. Oh, that you game. finished it. I beat that. Game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you mean you beat the game with a question mark? We talked about it already. That podcast already yeah, happened. Yeah, but, CDROM.com. Yeah, but we've talked about it and we recorded it. Why would I ever need to remember what you said if it's recorded in time? Fair enough. It was all written down. Yeah. <laughs> so in this game, there was a lot of things where when you talk to somebody, A, if you shouldn't have been talking to, to begin with, you're fucked. Or B, if you talk to them and say the wrong thing, you're fucked. There's yeah. a lot of situations like that. Like, it'll give you the option within the things to be like, how about you fuck off? Or like the interactions oh, with the yeah. NPCs can make things go sideways very quickly. So you really have to have your save game on point. Because when you die, you go back to the main menu. Game over. The game yeah, is over. I, um, so get your save game. I think game. I had to start the game over at one point. Because like I was talking to someone. And then I was like, oh, let's pick this one. It's like, I didn't even want to talk to you anyway. And then she just like killed me. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of that to be fair yeah there is a lot like, of that oh. and they also which i actually really like when you go to enter certain towns they tell you like hey shithead put your gun away there's no guns in this town and it doesn't do it yeah. for you so if you decide that you want to take you go in there with your gun out they'll start shooting at you oh well, do they i always Ish. put mine away yep 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 if you forget or that's pretty like, cool. hey shithead pew, pew, pew. that's pretty cool also um just to touch on the combat system i found out one times you can accidentally shoot your partner and your partner can accidentally shoot you. So, if you're like in line. Correct. It mm -hmm. won't go through or around them. Well, it will go through them, but not that you don't want to go through them. <laughs> no, and then there's no the way traditional to, sense. There's no way to tell them like, oh, my bad, I surrender. That's you're fighting right. to the death. That's it. So again, make yeah. sure your save games are on point. You're playing this game because if you accidentally shoot Ian, he's going to fuck you to death. And that's so the like, yeah, that. I, and I, that I, is that. I, I, um, Ian did eventually die for me. Mm. Um, he got killed by the marauders that like, you know, in, that I, it's like a camp of in the, Mongols. Yeah. In the sea of sand. Yeah. Um, they they killed him. Tons, and then I was like, oh, great. Now I'm dead. <laughs> oh, and then, oh no, 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 Sorry. No. He got killed. Yeah. The first time where I got ambushed, which was by like, uh, sand grasshoppers praying sand manti. Really? I didn't see any of those. So not oh, yeah, the scorpions. Yeah, yeah. And not rats. no, not scorpions. Just traversing the sand. And not large. I rats. got ambushed by about like six praying mantises. Really? I didn't see a single oh, mantis. Oh yes. Wow. I wonder if and that's like world. This is when I first discovered RNG. that you could run away from enemies. Yeah. And so like I was like, oh, we could do this. I got I got Lars. This is no problem. Ian. And then that he starts shooting first because he shoots first, and then he shoots. He just, like shoots twice, and he like doesn't kill this praying mantis. Mm. And now he turns. And then he starts moving towards Lars, and then four of his friends Ian. all start pointing, and then uh, all descend upon <laughs> Lars and like, eh, 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 eh. And they brutalize him. You can't even tell and him I'll, to leave because you don't have direct control over him, which normally in RPGs that I knew you do. Of, I just had to sit there and watch my homie die. Yeah, and I'm like, ah, right, here we gonna go. 
four action points run up he'll also what do you call it sorry go ahead continue your story four and then i'm points. like all right let me let me shoot the one that he shot twice and i'm like if i kill this one in in with a third bullet like we might have a chance that's here. when the strategy comes out for sure and i shot it and it did i missed and then they all turned at me. <laughs> and then they all started descending upon me in like a flying V of praying Manti. And I'm like, oh, God. And I'm like, okay, how do I... This is before I learned really how to like get to the map. Yeah. I'm like, how do get I... What do I do? one screen yeah, into I'm the like, map. Yeah. I'm like, I'm just going to have to run for it. Yeah. And so I'm just running. Like, and I'm like, all right, I, just, I don't see where like there's like a town or nothing. I got stepped in the middle of a sand dune. Yeah. And I'm just running for the corner of the map and I make it by like one hexagon. There's like four of these fragmentuses is surrounding me oh, and yes. I'm running to the exact diagonal towards the hexagon to get out there like as quickly as possible. There's certainly a lot of moments like that where you're getting like rando ganked and you really, that's when the strategy does come in. Like, okay. I can, it is nice to a degree to say, okay, well, let me think about how I'm going to do this, which is what people that play RPGs like. They like, to, okay, let yeah. me figure out I how mean, I can yeah. skill this up rather than like no, 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 action RPG. Well, oh, get out of here. And then yeah, run. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, it was just like, I don't know. I had a problem. It, it's kind of, I guess, my own fault for not reading the manual or paying enough attention. But like, I didn't Probably really know exactly what time, to do actually. or what to go. And I found it like annoying navigating around. Like, yeah, it was hard to open doors. Agreed. It was hard to like talk to people. Like, it wasn't really like clear and what I had to say and where I had to go. There was like at one point I like I, I, I like was going to go work for the dude like in trade town or whatever. And he's like, yeah, go talk to uh, Melinda in the store to the right. And she'll give you a 15% off. And their names aren't over their heads, which annoys me. Right. And then so I'm like, okay. And I go to the right. There's not a store there. And then I go to like the next tile over and there's like a farm. And I'm like, what the fuck is he talking about? And I'm like, okay, maybe I'll go back. Let me start from the beginning. And I go back and I'm like, all right, this is kind of skewed because it's kind of that three quarter angle view. And I'm like, yeah. maybe they mean like down to the right. And like I tried that and it's like a general store with like a troll or a dwarf in it or something. I'm like, that's not Melinda. <laughs> How do you know? And eventually I'm searching all these stores around and, and she's in the fucking store to the left. And I'm like, you asshole. Oh, he was probably standing and then he's, looking he's at like, you. Oh, she'll give you 15 percent off. And like 15%. I go to buy like her cheapest gun and it's like 12,000 rupees <laughs> and I have like $30 and two scorpion tails. <laughs> like what the fuck did I do? <laughs> Praise. Take my scorpion tail. <laughs> yeah. So I have an interesting interesting story about that general store. Well, first of all, I didn't know that there's sub tiles within the main tiles. And what I mean by that is when I went to, I think it was Shady Sands, the ones where there's like stores or Junk Town or whatever it was. Yeah. I, I didn't Junktown, know yeah. that there was multiple screens within the same map area. I was just Neither not did smart. I. I just, I thought it was just going to take me back to the big map, but I had to check out all the screen to find this lady who was going to give me a gun that I had no money for. Even though we should have known because on certain tiles on the main screen, when you go into them, it shows you a secondary map. Although there's not anything on the screen except one thing to choose from. Mm. So like, are you are you disagreeing or just unhappy? Uh, I, it doesn't line up with my experience. Yes. <laughs> you probably just click, 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 click. Okay. So... I go into and I finally by accidentally finding that there's another screen and I finally find this general store and I'm like, yeah. oh, nice. There's a general store. I could buy things. And I'm talking to this guy. He's one of it seems like main characters. Um, and I interact with him. I go to I go to barter with him. I see he's got a lot of money, not that many things. And he has this whole store there, whatever. So I don't really get a chance to buy much. I talk to him. Then I get out of the main screen. This fucking guy runs in. And says, Gizmo says hello. And then starts shooting him. <laughs> oh, nice. The main store owner. And now yeah, at this yeah, point, yeah. everyone's shooting everyone. <laughs> it's, it's like a Wild Western it's movie. Like, well, I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? And I can't tell if it's random or mm -hmm. scripted or supposed to happen or not supposed to happen. So the fighting continues. At this point, for some reason, Ian's decided we're on the side of the guy that came in and did the shooting. Apparently, we like Gizmo. Why wow, for an unknown well, reason. You gotta love Gizmo. And so this main store owner gets murked. And all of his boys get murked. And okay. it's just Did like you loot his corpse? Of course. Well, and yeah, now okay, I'm just looting his corpse and the whole store and all of his boys. Yeah. And at this point, I'm like, well, we're killing NPCs, and it seems we could do it pretty well. I don't know if I need these people to for the game, but I know that I've already played like two hours. So I only got an hour left to go here. Let's just uh, let's turn up the chaos a bit. So at that point, I started fucking slaughtering all of Junktown. 
Me and Ian, oh, really? me and Ian would go by the NPCs he's like, hey, what was that over there? They're like, what? And, then, <laughs> kept, kept, kept. <laughs> and just start murdering people. I picked black up all their up. items, all their money, all their weapons. We were rolling yeah. deep. Ian and I, we had, and I was like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. I don't know if this is supposed to happen or not supposed to happen, but we picked up a lot of shit that way. And in the general store, I finally found the item uh, which you need to progress the actual plot. So as Jim oh, mentioned, when the plot starts, um, and we're, there's honestly not going to be much to talk about here. But the first thing they want you to get is this chip to bring back to your home to get the water working. Yeah. And the longer that you play, if you don't get the chip, you start getting warnings. Did you get any of these warnings? No. Okay. I didn't get any warnings. Okay. So it gives you warnings like, there's only two months left. The fucking water is breaking. And there's like yeah, kind I, of like I also a had to restart like twice. So. Okay. I did a lot of saving, so it per- saved my progress. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't do as much. So it starts not, making you, know, you anxious because when you move around the map or you heal, you're burning up days. And I couldn't yeah. ever remember how many days I had left. Although I think in one of the menus, it just shows you yeah, oh, 41 days left. OK, so I, I got to progress this goddamn plot, but I can't find the fuck. OK, so I go to the place it tells you to go. And this is early in the game. I'm jumping back now. And in order to get there, you have to go down an elevator shaft, but you need a rope. So now very early in the game, I know in order to progress the plot, I need a rope. So I go everywhere on God's green earth to try and find this oh, goddamn right, rope. rope. And I don't find the rope. Now, fast forward to where we were. Murder happened all over the place. Me and Ian have become local shitheads, really. But mm-hmm. yeah. once I killed the store owner of the main store in town, I'm like, well, I'm going to fucking take everything. So I just stole everything he owned. And I finally found mm. there was a rope. Oh, and did his... you go back to the elevator shaft? Yes, I did. Okay. So okay, ba, 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 I go forward to the elevator shaft. I go down the rope. There's another level. The, I find another rope, takes me down another level, and then I get to the part where you're supposed to find the chip, and it's blocked off with rocks. And okay, here's what bothers me. The only way that I would know that I just progressed the plot is a tiny little line of text on the bottom of the screen that says, ah, looks like the center of this is blocked off. We're going to have to find somewhere else to find the chip. Uh. There's no achievement there's no cut scene there's no not even right. anything that comes up on screen new area discovered nothing just one single line of text like if i wasn't paying attention i might not have even seen it happen and now i'm still i would be looking around like how the fuck do i progress my way through this dungeon it's kind of like a dungeon really um as we know dungeons and games mm. and so that really bothered me because there's not any other cut scenes in the game there's never like besides when you hit like a level there's nothing else that ever happens to make you feel like oh i progressed the plot like, you don't get EXP from quests um, like you do in some other games. Mm. I don't know. I didn't like it. I, I really would have liked if there was, like, uh, more of a, not checkpoint system, but, like, more of a running thing. Okay, I'll compare it to WoW for those who played WoW. It'll let you know, like, what's the next thing you need to be doing. And when you advance the right. plot, it'll change and tell you. Like, okay, this is done. We've explored it. Now, actually, we have to go somewhere else to find the chip. It would say yeah, that. Yeah, I think. Here it did. Yeah, I mean. You're just like, oh, It's fuck. hard to ask for these things that became standard after the game well, I don't, came out. I don't know if that's standard. I'm just saying yeah. I liked it in WoW, and I would have liked to see it here. That's all I'm saying. And it, I, it was really odd I mean, that there wow wasn't was more cutscenes. in five. Yeah, it wasn't that long after. And it's yeah, hard to say because we haven't played years. any other games in the Fallout series. But that was something that bothered me. Um, because it does feel very open ended, but you know, I would expect the main plot to at least give me something to let me know I'm moving along in the game. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I know what you mean. It makes sense. Little feedback. But I don't know what that's... Sun. Maybe that's not yeah. how they roll. They're like, "Fuck it, just explore the world, do whatever the hell you want to do." But like, if there's yeah, a goddamn, if they're going to tell you to. Yeah, right. If they're going to tell you explore the world, do whatever you want to do, you know, don't tell you when you're doing something right or something wrong. Maybe the, 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 there shouldn't be like a global countdown happening. You know? I get, yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, I guess it does add some urgency that well, you have to do something. Yeah. Uh, let me talk about one one last thing that I had here um, in mm. terms of the way that the game went. Um, as Jim mentioned, there was these marauders and they're like pretty much Mongols. And the interesting part about that, which I actually liked is if you just go to their town and try and interact with the main guy, they'll just all murder you. And they, mm. there's a couple different text options you could do when talking to them, but all of them lead you to one answer. And it's, hey, I'm an adventurer I'm trying to find information. And he goes, I don't fucking like adventurers. He doesn't say these words, but he says something like it. And then he's like, get the fuck out of here. Not in those words, because he's like a Mongol. Keep the change, you yeah. filthy animal. And a happy new year. And then all of his boys murky to death. Now, I've tried yeah. it a couple different ways. It always ends up that way. 
Okay. So further along in the plot, um, in one of the other towns, it has you go there to rescue some dude's daughter. And now when you interact with them, you have different options. So you've progressed the mm. plot. Now you could do different things. And he goes, all right, you want the girl? What are we going to do here? And he ends up saying, all right, I'll fucking one-on-one fight you, fist fight you. If you win, you can take the broad. If you lose, you fucking, you're going to be dead, boy. Did you win? No, I died. <laughs> luckily i had saved before that but it puts you in this yeah. little pen like fenced off gets rid of all your weapons and you and this guy just take turns hitting each other sometimes you miss mm. he doesn't seem to miss very often and it's basically like we'll let you learn that you're not ready to do this by fucking you to death and then, then you'll know okay i think in the future now i'm strong enough just one-on-one with my current, I guess, armor and skill points that I could probably fuck this guy up. So I'll have to set this in the background. So I actually kind of like that, that it, it, yeah. it'll it let you get fucked over. You'd think I now wouldn't let armor, that, but I like, did. How much like armor or guns and stuff did you get? Cause like only when I like, when I did a job for like one guy in Junktown or whatever, yeah. I got like a few dollars and a few of the people that we went to go, like we we're protecting like a wagon or something. I don't know if you did that no, job. No, I didn't do that one. Yeah, there's like one guy and he's like, oh, yeah, I got some work for you. I'll give you like 200 crowns or whatever it is. Caps. We should probably talk about that. The main um, currency yeah, the bottle is caps. bottle caps. Yeah. You're, you're right. You're is right, that right. Nuka-Cola? I know that's like a whole thing in Fallout. But no, I think that's from Borderlands. Uh, uh, Call of Duty. No, I don't know. Is we didn't get far this? enough to find out what the whole, whole bottle caps are about. So that that's uh, something that happened. Oh, it is from Fallout. Yeah, I thought like Nuka-Cola is like a real... Is the cola? Yeah, it's a beverage produced. Yeah, we don't know why the bottle caps are the, uh, and I'm sure people that are familiar with the series are going absolutely insane right now. But bottle caps are the uh, currency. And yeah, I mean, we we if if we were wanted to do this this podcast once a month and play games for an entire month, then we can get deep into the no because the, with some the, of these the games you don't want to subject milieu. yourself. <laughs> Oh my God, I could not <laughs> play. For all, if I had to play Escape from Monkey Island for an entire month, I would be in an insane asylum. I would be in I mean, three hours, I almost went into an insane asylum. We did four hours. Did we? Yeah, oh, okay. back when the podcast started, we did four hours and then we turned it down to three because Steam we had to, because seems to we think went three hours it, We enough. literally had to do an insane asylum game because of Because we were Island. living there. Yeah, we had to break <laughs> out as part of our actual real lives. Yeah, so we didn't find out what the bottle caps thing is, but I did find that interesting. And it it is nice. I don't know. I enjoyed how many ways that you could be killed as long as you are you know to have your saves on point. If you have your save states on point, you don't have to worry about being killed. It's annoying, but that, yeah. you can I mean, go it makes back. sense. But you, that, yeah. you know, and there's no auto save. I'm pretty sure. I mean, sure. Yeah, that's a stratagem you can do with a lot of games, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Inch your way along. So that's that. Um, Jim, did you have any other particular besides the fact that you can go around murdering people if you're strong? Oh, you asked me about items. I didn't get yeah. that many good items until I started murdering NPCs. And then I picked up a lot of good items. Then I had like yeah, so five different even guns, really... two different types of ammo, a shit ton of money. Yeah, I, I had like almost no money, so I couldn't really buy anything. I was trying to just sell off the shit that I had. And like, it doesn't tell you really what it is. No, like I, I just saw like eventually I learned that it was a stim pack from when I went to the general store and was going to go buy stuff. But like in your inventory, like it wasn't telling me what this stuff you was. have to change your mouse over to inspect, click on it and then yeah. look down at the text box to see what it says. So like I was like, I was like, oh, what is this? <laughs> yeah. And then I didn't, yeah, yeah, so I didn't like I, and then I couldn't find way. out where like my like where it showed how much money I had or anything until I went to go barter with someone. And it was like, you have 10 bottle caps. You hold it in your inventory as an item. And then there's like X and then the number of bottle caps. Right. You yeah. Have. I saw that eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's weird. It's weird but that you your money be is like in part your... of your HUD, like kind of like your your health. Yeah, you know a mean? lot of, I'm, as I'm sure, a lot like of, armor points. As I'm sure a lot like of the listeners know, in a lot of games, your money separated out from your inventory somewhere. So there's like you a little like gold it as meter. a sack of bottle yeah. caps. I don't know. The bottle caps thing was interesting. I liked it. Or maybe I'll, yeah, I'll learn but, how uh, that works. Yeah, so I didn't even really get a chance. I, I got eventually when I was doing a job for the for the, one of these guys in Junktown. Mm-hmm. It was like, oh, protect this like shipment on a wagon or something like that. And like you had to go. It was like me and Lars had to go yeah. kill some people and like walk back to town. But I got to loot a few of those dead guys and I got like it, was, it looked like football pads. Yeah. It's like the armor that yeah, I got. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then. But that's about it. And the 
armor and items have a weight. Although I've never hit the weight limit. There's like a weight to your inventory and a weight to the armor. Yeah, maybe I eventually. So sometimes the weight points. scales with the level of armor you have too. So I, don't I know if this game assumed does that had to be what it was because I couldn't find a way to show me which armor was better than the other. The only thing it told me mm. about it is its weight. Which is an so interesting that, way maybe to do that it. There's was no the, defense the points. There's no anything like that. Or There's maybe when you weird. bring up, yeah, maybe when you bring up like your character, where like all your points are, mm. you know, like your level up screen or whatever it yeah. is for like your skill points and shit. There's like maybe an armor attribute somewhere. A little that you clunky. Can see the difference. A little clunky. Yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I like I don't have any interest in playing this game again. It was just like too hard for me to navigate. Like, I didn't enjoy any of the things that are supposed to be exciting, like the combat. Yeah. I really didn't enjoy, like, navigating around the maps or, like, talking to the people or going around the towns. Yeah. But I, I'm sure there there's supposed to be some good plot or something for them to, like, have a popular, you know, game series here. They're... they're I haven't found the reason why this is a popular series. Well, it's very yet. cool. I mean, like they're yeah, they're yeah, really no, like dedicated the to the theme and like the environment yeah. and the vibe. Like everything around it's very well done. It doesn't. I like seem... the aesthetic of the game. I just didn't enjoy playing. Yeah, it. I think it's the the some of the control mechanics and just we're not as big of a fan of the gameplay type. Yeah, yeah. Having yeah, the too. action I mean, points I, I, and having to wait for turns that kind of annoyed me. Yeah, I, I, yeah, have never really enjoyed a turn-based combat game, like, as a video game, I should say. Oh, you Maybe so just not a video game, you enjoy them. Oh, yeah, so, like, yeah. something like uh, Dungeons & Dragons, I gotcha. Yeah. I thought you were saying, you're real life, and you're like, mm, I want to pick up that mug of coffee, but I don't have any enough action points. Well, I, my tiredness is my action That's points. That's true, I'm too actually. tired to even pick up the coffee. That's com- true, the actually. Coffee. So, you have to end your turn, which is to throw yeah, yourself to the life. ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that was Fallout. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I could see the appeal. I think it's something that like you give yourself to, you get mm-hmm. immersed in it, and there's a lot to do there. And in the game's yeah. well made, everything kind of makes sense. I just wish the um, plot mechanics were better. Like an example, one of the quests, which it doesn't even tell you is a real quest, and it's very easy to kind of forget what you're doing. Um, you have to go clear a cave of scorpions or rod scorpions, whatever the fuck they're called. But when you kill the last one, nothing happens. Like in Diablo, yeah, you clear yeah. the den of evil, and it goes like, oh. The dead of evil has yeah. been cleansed. So, like, I didn't know exactly. I didn't know that guy said you kind of like you have to pick up on like contact clues on like how to progress the game, which is good as a like a theory as, as like an idea, right? Mm. But then, like, you don't get any confirmation or reinforcement that if you're doing the right thing or the wrong, thing, right? Which right, is right. like a very old school way of handling it. It's just like you're on your own, see what happens. Yeah. Um. But like, yeah, you go and you like find this scorpion cave and you like aren't sure if it's the right scorpion cave or not and these scorpions will fuck you up wait no that it's not true because there's a dude that brings you to it unless you found it on your own i think i might have found it on my own never mind that yeah because one of them the guy brings you all into it no because there was an option it was like i'll meet you there or something oh okay Right. I think that's what I clicked and I had to like go out on the map and I was able to find it. And unless I'm mistaken, yeah. I could be. No, I that, that, that sounds one, but. certainly plausible. And then, yeah, I killed them all. And like at that point, I didn't even know that you could like loot things. Yeah. And I like went back or like I, I think I went all the way to the end of the cave. And like in Diablo, I was expecting there to be a chest or something, something. for me to get Just out of it. Just something. And then I was able to like I or clicked on like a pile of bones or something like that. And I was able to loot that like. Using like the hand, the hand job signal or whatever it is. <laughs> Start whacking then, off like, these I bones. I was able to pick up the bones, yeah. you know, I was able to manhandle some bones. And then I was, I was like, oh, what happens if I go to the corpse of the scorpion? And that's where I got some scorpion tails, which ended up being, you know, my main bankroll. Yeah. You're right about that. Um, when you get to the end of something like that, I expected there to be a main boss or a chest or something. You s- yeah. Something I, I wasn't sure what I was getting out of it or that I did the right thing. And I was like, you know what? Let me go back and talk to the person who told me about it. And see if I did it. And they're like, oh, thank you. It's a turn. little too realistic in that way. Like, because you had to really like, did I get everyone? And like retrace your yeah. steps around to make sure. Because like, I don't want to fucking go all the way to this guy. And he'd be like, I don't think that's clear at all. And then like, oh, it, great. It, it was one sounds fucking like scorpion a good hiding idea, out. Right? Yeah. Like, it, it sounds like a good idea, but I didn't enjoy it in practice. Yeah. At least like, especially because it was like s- slow and tedious because of the turn-based combat. Yeah. Oh, I have one final thing. Yeah. And then I think I'm ready to wrap up Fallout, which we didn't mention. In the game, at almost all times, it very much gives you the opportunity to determine if you want to be a nice guy or a shithead. And if you got the cojones for it, you could be, I'm pretty sure, a dirtbag your whole life. 
you're going to have to fight a lot of people constantly. Mm. But almost every person you interact with, they give you dickhead options to say. Now, and do those like roll up and are like deterministic to like what kind of happens to you? Or I don't know, but it? I would have to think so. Because I feel like in games like that, the whole point is to kind of like if you're a dick, you have like a dickish path. And if you're a nice guy, you have a nicest path. Right. I don't know. I mean, it could be the same game and just it might be faster if you're an asshole because you just rather than going through the quest, you just murder them but and I, take yeah, what you I want. I wonder if it like it, it, but it's it definitely just more like difficult. eliminates things for you to do. Yeah. Like if like you'll never be able to do X or like you'll only be able to do Y. So for one I mean? guy, I he he was going to give me this staff, which or scythe or whatever which i didn't know he was going to give me and before mm. i did the quest he already had it in his inventory now i had enough money that i ended up bartering for it and he sold it to me and then when i completed the quest he gave it to me again because he has to give it to you for the next quest but if i wanted to i could have just murdered him and took it and i might have been able to move on to the next quest regardless probably maybe i mean there's nothing stopping you from killing anyone except for how strong they are like in the Mongol camp, I could have started like fucking fucking shit up, but those dudes are actually pretty strong, so they would have. Yeah, fucking, you couldn't even punch them. Yeah, they so. would have uh, mopped me all over the floor. So that was an interesting mm-hmm. mechanic, and and I would imagine if we read the manual, it might have mentioned something about you know your duality or whatever your split. If you want to be bad, be bad, but it's gonna be rough. If you want to be right, good, be yeah. good, but it's gonna take a little longer. So yeah. I like I like having the option. Yeah, we did. We did. We did the fallout, and I could we see. Out. I could see the appeal. The style is cool. Yeah. The world is cool. Mm-hmm. Everything's very well made. The the video, the audio, everything. Um, I could see why this. Oh was yeah, I think it's a good game. Yeah. I just didn't enjoy it. Yes, I mean, I actually had a pretty good time playing it. I didn't find it to be very. Um, there was enough to keep you busy, even when you're floundering. That even when I mm. didn't know where to go, I was still occupied. Um, yeah, I, I I didn't enjoy moving around, like actually moving around. Yeah, on the map. Me. Yeah, I know. Yeah, saying. it's a little bit more tedious to the point where it made everything just annoying for me. So, and you also and I don't can't, mind like point and click moving like that, but it was just like I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. You also but. couldn't because you're on this overview map. If you get to the end of once you go into a tile, once you get to the end of the tile, it would have been nice if you could just go into the next tile. But when you get to the end of a tile, it brings you to the overview map again. Yeah. And to, so moving around, the only thing that's nice is that on the very main map. If you click something on the other end of the map, it'll automatically just go. Now, it's it's yeah, not going I, I, to yeah. instantly go. It's going to slowly walk its way there, and you'll mm-hmm. see in how much time's passing. But at least you have that option, which I thought was nice. And there was kind of like uh, locations you've been to on the side. You can just click that, and it'll go. Yeah. And like very slowly fast travel. Yes. Yeah. Slowly fast travel. <laughs> yeah. So that was yeah. Fallout. We did it. I'm, I'm happy that, I, that we played it. I'm assuming if we end up. Uh, not dying and continuing this podcast for a while. We'll play. We'll end up making our way through the other ones. Not dying IRL. Oh uh, no, probably only Fallout Two. I mean, that one's ninety eight. Fallout oh, true, Three is yeah. two thousand and eight. True, so, so we probably won't even make it. Well, there might be a Fallout Two, um, and that, this is probably the perfect time to, rec- to to mention. If you have a game that you'd like to recommend, please send us an email to the boys at cdromp dot com. And uh, we could be playing one of the games that you would like to play that you have. And if you that have a reason CDR. you liked it, please. Put that in the email as well. If you played it as a kid or you've always heard something about it, we definitely like to hear that kind of stuff. And yeah. uh, we've already knocked out um, one reco, which is in the past uh, Majesty Fantasy Kingdom Sim. That was from uh, Mike from the Lou. That was a good time. And uh, we'll talk about the next game right after we do our wrap up here. Our wrap up. Okay. So Jim and I both give it a score. I don't even remember how my scoring system worked. I think it was called oh. Bob's bald basement heads or something like that bob's old mm. man basement head review and i was it out of a 10 let's say it was on a 10 scale we should just do them all out of 10 okay yeah. out of 10 i would give this game a 7.75 i want to give it an 8 because it's really well made um but i really don't enjoy some of the the gameplay mechanics i'm not a huge fan of turn base which isn't their fault but they could have made it an action rpg they t- chose to make it turn base so i will kind of hold that against them um and i really didn't like how the it didn't 
keep you up to date with the plot and didn't give you any kind of like rewards and stuff like that in the normal way. Even when you were given items, it didn't feel very, I don't know, not tactile, but I didn't have the, I wasn't getting my shots of yeah, yeah, yeah. Not adrenaline, but like mm. happiness, serotonin. When I beat something, like, yeah, I cleared the den of evil. It was just like right, right, silence. Right, yeah. I, I didn't like that. Jim? Uh. Yeah, um, you, I don't remember what my points, points are you know, called. You call them points. Just, you just call them oh, they're points. points. Yeah. yeah, they're points. Uh, yeah. This one's probably getting like a 6.9. Really? Yeah. Um, wow. It, I can see that it's a good game, but I had so many personal qualms with it. Yeah. Now, this is this is my experience rating. This isn't they're just a reflection on the actual game. Right. I mean, I could see people enjoying this game. and It's I, not I, how I good of a game. vision for it. It's how much you Certainly enjoy not. it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I enjoyed the look of it, but playing it was just really annoying for me. So, six point nine. Yeah, because you know that's nice. Six point nine. If you times that by uh, ten, you know where you are. Woo! Dog. Yeah. No. <laughs> so we already told you how you could recommend a game. Now we'll yep. uh, tell you how it works with games pick. Every other week, we switch off who picks the games. Now we're going to be doing a Bob pick. And I'm actually going to be dipping down into our uh, actually, uh, you know, just so we're not fucking fakers. Jim already knows what game it is. Wow. Bob, come on. <laughs> Dude, you got to leave a little no, time no, and no, no, for no, the no, kids. No. But they don't know what game it is. So because Jim and I, because we kind of fell behind here and we had already finished playing the game. And today is not our normal recording day. Um, we started playing the next game. Which is bum ba bum ba bum ba bum ba bum roller coaster tycoon? Yay! Wow! Which was consider me very shocked. <laughs> Color me surprised. And this was and another write-in yeah. recommendation uh, request from Joey Bombs from Staten Island, New York. Uh, I don't think he's little, gonna. Maybe he will or won't like what I have to say about this game. Clap, we'll see. Little clapperoo. Yep. So the version we're playing um, is on Steam called Roller, Co- roller Coaster Tycoon. Deluxe, and it, it yeah. encompasses the original game, plus um, I think two expansions that came out about a year or two after. Um, but it's pretty much the same game. And you're not going to be doing any of the expansions, right? I didn't do that. Not that I. I don't know. I haven't even opened it, so I don't know oh, if yeah, they're just either. stuck in there, or if you have an option to pick it or what. Right? But yeah, you definitely don't have the option to just pick the regular version, which I okay. You know, so then did, we'll just play it for what it is do because the, we didn't play it. Yet. The expansions are still within our time frame, and you can't just play an expansion. I'm pretty sure. Like, we don't have the ability on Steam to do so. And we're trying to pick games on Steam so that way you can go and play it as well. Yeah. Um, uh, I also looked it up on Torrents and the only the deluxe version was there anyway. So, spoiler! So, I would have to actually buy the game like, on Yeah, we're Amazon not doing that at this moment. So, we're yeah, trying to make it, if we can, uh, play a version that's as close to the original as possible, but also very accessible um, so you yourself can go and play it. And I'm very happy to say that I've talked to a number of people that listened uh, to the podcast and have gone off and played some of the games. Not in time with us, but after the fact, be like, oh, you know what? I haven't played the fucking Sims in a while. Let me crack that bitch open. And I've been getting some good gruntles, so I'm I'm, I'm glad to hear yeah, that. Yeah, you gotta get a grunt every once in a gotta while. Gotta get a little grunt here and there. Yeah, uh, grunt. Get your shout grunt out on. to John Batchelor. The most miserable fuck in the world. Again, if you want to watch any of our previous episodes, and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, I normally do. If you're listening right now, you could be watching. All of these are up in video form on YouTube. And if you're watching right now and you want to just not and don't see us, besides closing your eyes or turning off your monitor, you could also listen Mm. on all of the main podcasting uh, platforms, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever the fuck you want. If you need any of the info, go to cdromp.com and all of our info is there. And uh, until next time, uh, keep on romping, romp and roll. Keep on stomping. And yeah. uh, we'll be back to talk about um, Roller Coaster Tycoon, which is actually yeah. a number of people have, have uh, requested. Joe was just yeah, the first formal. Game. Yeah, it was a bit, of a bit of a banger. Jim, closing remarks. That's it. Um, notes till next week yeah play 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 this game if you want if oh yeah if you want <laughs> go ahead and play it and uh happy holidays although it doesn't yeah. make any sense because by, by the time you've heard it it's already happened happy new well, year you know what holiday we're now yeah it's true happy halloween and we're now in yeah. 2022 and yeah, uh yeah, the yeah. year of the romp has began we're gonna get some good games yeah. under our belt thanks so much for tuning in uh we hope to hear from you from our family to yours for all coast adios goodbye